Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechbelly.com. We have a very, very special guest with us, Philip Moore, CEO of Proctors and the Rep. Philip, welcome to The Jewish Thank View. Thank you, Rabbi. I'm delighted to be here. And you have no connection with the cigarette company. I have no connection, okay. never <laughs> did. Actually, there's a funny story. Uh, years ago, when I was in Western New York, as I now have learned you had some history, yeah. there used to be, there was for one year, buses in the downtown Buffalo that had big, huge signs with a picture of a 55-year-old man saying, <laughs> Philip Morris says smoking kills. <laughs> and I guess it was a bunch of anti-smoking people who organized the people around the country in big cities who had the name Philip Morris because the company couldn't yeah, sue they them. Should, they it was their name. Them. And so individuals would have their faces right. on the sides of buses. Well, saying, McDonald's is doing that skills. now with their promotion. They're saying, I'm Ronald McDonald, I'm Ronald McDonald, I'm Ronald McDonald. And they're promoting the name right, to right. show that Ronald McDonald is all over the country. It's real, it's real. <laughs> there you go. But Philip Morris was local, local enough, 60 miles away from downtown Buffalo. I mean, you were in Jamestown, yep. New York at the time, the home of Lucy. Lucy Lucille and Roger Tory Peterson and um, that's right and uh, Robert Jackson and in case no one knows Roger Tory Peterson was in like an av aviary uh, or ornithologist, ornithologist and a, and, a and an illustrator and right. um, uh, started the series of bird books um, right. that have really sort of changed bird watching yes because the the field guide of books became a pattern standard and the pattern of and doing there's that a whole. There's a whole exhibit dedicated to the Roger Tory Peterson uh, field there. It's, there's a, there's uh, yeah, a materials and a study program yeah. and other stuff. And then Robert Jackson, uh, in my last couple of years in Jamestown, um, we opened a Robert Jackson Center for Justice. And Robert Jackson, do you know who he is? Um, was the last Supreme Court justice to read the law <laughs> and uh, was appointed by um, uh, uh, Roosevelt. Yeah. And was uh, picked by Truman to be the chief American prosecutor at the Nuremberg Once you trials. say that, you know, and, uh, uh, once you said that. Well, Robert Jackson's it, it, on one of those common names, like, you right, know. Right, but he was yeah, an amazing, no, amazing well, man. Know, yeah. He kept the Allies together mm -hmm. in order for there to be trials. Yeah. Because no, the yeah. Russians would have once done what has happened name, before. So to think that James Kelly had all. such a big. On all those three people mm -hmm. graduated within the same year. Of really? uh, high school, kind of an amazing something in the water. Moment. Something in the water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have our Philip Morris. Okay. So tell us what the, your great accomplishment, and I mean that for real, uh, that you've been doing in Proctors and really Schenectady was always known as like uh, well, going for, downhill. No, well, Vaudeville is what Proctors was originally known for. Everyone came through yeah, the circuit. A long time ago. That was in the nineteen twenties, thirties. That's what I'm saying. And you know, I'm not that old to remember that over here. You know, George <laughs> Burns, Jack Benny. I mean, yeah, yeah. Proctor's was huge. Place. Was the right? I mean, oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. It was and, one of the great vaudeville stops. Yeah, and then it became a great movie theater as Proctor's, Mister Proctor's, Frederick uh, uh, Proctor expanded his small empire, which included a theater in Troy and went all the way down the Hudson to New York City. I mean, it quite a. I think he had 28 right. movie theaters at one point, something like that. Well, if you go to the lobby of Proctor's and Schenectady, you can read all about his life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I have. <laughs> yeah. And the changes in uh, downtown Schenectady have been pretty remarkable. I mean, I think our role in it primarily has been recapturing hope and optimism. Well, you've no. al you also made an announcement recently that you have some efficiency, energy efficiency going on, or... Well, was part of what we you... did a dozen years ago was we imagined what our neighborhood needed to be in order for us to be successful. Because finally, in that link of the chain kind of metaphor, yeah. you're only as good as the, the weakest, weakest link. link. Right. And, and our neighborhood had died twice in 10 years. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. You really yeah. revitalized it. That so we, we decided to look at what could we do to help future developers of the properties next to us be successful. And energy costs are a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so we built a central heating and chilling plant that now heats and cools about a million two, about seven buildings, a million two uh, square feet of property. Uh -huh. And by doing that, our users save money. 
and we reduce our carbon footprint by about 500 tons of carbon a year. Really? That's which a is lot. hard to believe. Yeah, 500 yeah, tons in one little neighborhood. You know, makes you and there's revenue that goes to Proctor's because and of this, the, right? And there's From revenue the other that goes to Proctor's, they, exactly, and, and it reduces our costs. Well, I have to tell revenue. you what the revitalization of what you did with that Proctor's complex and how you got corporate sponsorship to help with expanding that has just been a phenomenal experience because I've been up here 35 years. From I grew up in Brooklyn, and I knew Proctor's when I was here in the late 70s, and I've seen it all the way through, and I was really didn't like going down, downtown Schenectady in the 80s and early 90s, but all of a sudden now I'm go, I can't wait to go again. You know, it's like I want to go. It's yeah, like, downtown's fun. And soon we have a Mexican radio opening, which is a, a restaurant, spectacular yeah. restaurant. It'll be a little bit of a destination itself. And Johnny's is doing great. And Aperitiva mm. took a gamble. And, and Villa took a gamble. Bombers. The, the bombers. I mean, the community... You know what's interesting about it, uh, going back to what I started to say about bringing hope back, uh, local people making decisions to invest back in the downtown. Now, local doesn't mean Schenectady. I mean, some people are from Albany, some are from Troy. Mm -hmm. but, but a sense that, wow, this might work. My investment might work here. And um, it's been proven true so far, and I hope... For a long time. So when you first got here, how many years ago is it now? Twelve. Twelve years ago. You must have looked at the place and said, I got a lot of work ahead of me. <laughs> well, I, mean, you I, I drove in for my um, uh, first interview and I came up from Jamestown. I came up uh, Route 88 and I uh, got off at the um, Rotterdam exit mm -hmm. and drove in and made a mistake and stuck on Route 7 because there were no signs to stay on Broadway and go downtown right. for those of you who know those directions out there. And I stopped at a Stewart's, of course a Stewart's, and I said, gee, where's downtown? And the woman at the desk said, oh, you don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, well, I'm... I'm I I'm sort going, of have to. I'm going to Proctor's. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. Here's how you get to Proctor's. So even then, Proctor's had a special little menu. special yeah. place, an, an island in the but middle But again, of, you went to you Proctor's and then there. you got out as soon as possible. You right. parked your car as close to Proctor's. And I went to, my, <laughs> to the board interview and I went to the board members and said, what happened? Yeah. I, I never saw downtown so bad. And I'm a downtown watcher. I've spent my life working in that intersection between arts, culture, and community. Mm -hmm. And downtowns and... The diversity of community need to come together, and that's where I think they do come together. And I've watched that all, all my life since I was mm -hmm. a kid in New Haven. Mm -hmm. New Haven, sort of the inventor of every good and bad downtown renewal program in the country. Um, and, and so I've watched this forever, yeah. and I couldn't get over how deplorable it was. When my wife came up during my second interview, she went, oh, no, not another <laughs> dying town. Um, yeah. But it's been a remarkable tribute to the community that's really st stood up and, yeah. and, and, and said, we're going to fix this and committed to it, invented Metroplex, an incredible invention. How, much, how, ma how many mayors did you go through in 12 years? Was it three, four? Three. You had Jasinski. Right. You were after Ducey. I was after Ducey. Right. So Jasinski and uh, Mayor Stratton and McCarthy. And McCarthy. Now, you also have a former mayor either on your board or in your employ, Karen Johnson. Uh, that's correct. Uh, she's uh, on our employ. That she's uh, part-time at this point. Uh, <laughs> but she was mayor a long time ago, and she's uh, working in our development department and right. helping with our planned giving. Right. Um, so, we also have another mayor but, who's on our board. Uh, Kathy Sheehan. Okay, well, yeah, but isn't that honorary? Yeah. No, no, no. Like Jerry Jennings was on your board? No. No, he wasn't? No, Kathy's oh. been on the board for a long time, seven, eight years. Oh, even with before, okay. Even before she was mayor. Okay, so but, but it, I'm sorry, does it help to have someone of uh, Karen Johnson's connections and expertise when you talk about business development? Is she the brains behind a lot of what's been going on? Because she's got those 
connections from when she was mayor, and she was mayor for eight years, I believe. Karen knows the subtleties yeah. of lots of things. Right. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I, I think she would laugh if she watches this program because I'm going to replicate what I will do to her sometimes. Uh -huh. she's, she's there three days a week. Uh -huh. And, oh, this happens once Oops. a month or so. It doesn't happen every day by any means. But once a month or so, I will look at Karen and I'll say, I need you for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And we'll walk in the other room and lock the door. And I'll go, okay, this is what's going on. Here's what I think is going on. Uh, am I right? Did I miss it? What do you think? And she'll be very straight and tell me what she knows or... Well, well, who I should call, or right. so she's she's terrific. Someone has to know the ins and outs. Well, I was just going to ask, you know, like getting into the meat of it. I mean, what is Proctor's? Give me some of the shows. I mean, you know, tell our audience the things that you accomplished there, not just the Aura, which is of course great, but like what's doing there in Proctor's. Well, in general, in uh, general. at this point, the theater, the, the theater, the complex, which is three theaters, a. a, a, a uh, meeting rooms, uh, conference space, and a banquet hall, key hall. Uh, last year we did 1,738 events. It's like five which, a day. That's yeah, incredible. which ranges from movies to Broadway to um, um, conferences for three days, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we were open 358 days. Um, we're open. We're really open every day. Mm -hmm. In the summer, we'll close on Sundays, and we'll close on Memorial Day and Labor Day, and mm -hmm. that's about it. I mean, we really don't close very often. Mm -hmm. And unlike most places like us, which open for performances, we're open 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. every day, even if we have no shows, and mm -hmm. we never don't have shows. But we have a coffee shop and a restaurant, and the arcade, mm -hmm. which runs from the old Smith Street up to... State Street, mm -hmm. um, it's really been a street, in essence. Mm -hmm. It's been a pedestrian street mm -hmm. for 90 years, since it was built in 1926. And we decided, we thought about this a lot, we could have said, all right, we'll put the box office of the admission at those doors. But then we would be closed all day. And mm -hmm. that didn't make sense. The building was defining itself mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. And so we went, all right, let's expand what that arcade's about. And so when this, the county uh, sold us for a dollar the abandoned Carl Company, which is where the new GE Theater is and the apostrophe and the banquet and, and the, excuse me, the conferencing uh, facilities on the second floor, we just expanded it the, into right. the arcade. So that's all the part that's open all the time. And really only the doors into the main stage are only open when there's a performance or an event. And then you got the Parker Inn which is connected. Right, well we don't control the park, or, but we right. do con control a small piece of land that is how they have a second egress. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so they are tied into that space too, right. yes. Right, and that's been, I presume, working out well for both the Parker Inn and for yourself? Yeah, that's worked out fine. I mean, there's been some changes in ownership and stuff, but it's No, all but I mean generally when people come and they want to stay in downtown, they stay at the Parker Inn, and then... It's a lovely small hotel, yeah. just yeah, yeah. lovely. And what's the, now you have uh, open stage media, the Eighth Step, which used to be Eighth Step Coffee House. Yeah, but within. You have Classic Theater Guild, Morco, which is the Mop and Bucket, bucket, mop and bucket Company. Mm -hmm. Mopco, yep. <laughs> Don't ask me to say that again. And then the Capital Rep in Albany, you're renaming The Rep. And there's a new branding going on with that. Yeah, within Proctor's, what we did was sort of, the, 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 large, the attitude within the organization is just say yes. Mm -hmm. We, we kind of don't say no first. We say yes first and then try to unwrap what that means. And so we've become a bunch of things. So we're public access for Schenectady County. That's right. And, we, and that's open stage media. And we create a fair amount of product that gets distributed in Albany and, and, and in Troy and in Saratoga. We have a great relationship with Channel Albany, and we hope to grow that over time, and that's a good thing. Well, we hope so, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good thing. Personally, so yeah. we would broadcast this, these, that's where we, these shows, we, uh -huh. whatever. We, we like that. Good. We have a lovely small studio and a bigger studio. Uh, we do a lot of training. We have an extensive education program most people don't know about. 
We're in Albany High School and Schenectady High School full-time with media instructors, working with English instructors to try to work with kids who have the least likelihood of success. And by using media as an approach to learning English, kids will read things that they might not otherwise read because they want to create the video product that mm -hmm. might be attached to it as a project. So it's a hands-on hands -on tactile way of learning, which makes a big difference to some learners. Some learners learn by book, some don't, but they're still brilliant, mm -hmm. but they need another way to, 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 to be attached to the which, material. Well, it's a whole other topic, which is why Common Core doesn't work, but that's a whole other topic. But I wanted to, what's going on in the basement of Proctor's down there? Because I, I heard there might be a studio or some live performances. Or yeah, the, that all. The you lower, also have the market. The uh, lower level yeah. um, is called the Education Center. When we have a Sunday market, which is uh, October through May, the mm -hmm. last Sunday market was this past Sunday. Monday. Then it goes outdoors and then comes back inside. When we have a Sunday market, it's all throughout what's called Rob Alley, the first floor of what was the Carl Company years ago, and the lower level. And then the lower level on Friday nights, every Friday night is Mop Go Mop and Bucket um, um, Company. Uh, comedy, yeah. improv comedy. Right. And then um, it's used as a studio. It's our bigger studio. So um, uh, Schenectady Today and a few other shows that we shoot for our public access happen there that want more than this. And then we have a small studio upstairs for this kind of thing. And they're, they're, they're differently configured. Like, like the studio, you walk and you just do it in the small one. And the big one is a bigger studio. It needs to be set up, needs to have a set, needs to have other things. But we have about eight shows that are shot in the lower mm -hmm. level. And we have, I think, uh, 22 hours of programming that we're shooting at the smaller upstairs. It's a uh, lot facility. of programming going yeah, on. Yeah, it's a lot of programming. And how is your your son? I met him at Proctor's. What does he do? For, uh, does he work there? Or uh, no, no, no. My son well, is... Maybe he was um, at the time, but... Actually, you're right. He did for a very short period of time help out the maintenance department when we were in no, trouble that's there. That's what it was. Okay. Um, but uh, he is now the executive director of an emerging not-for-profit called, called the Chef's Consortium, which is a mixture of 10 or 12 chefs from throughout the region who are concerned about farm to table, promoting and advocating so farm to table. So he's local? Yep, he's local, he's decided he to make this because he, so he's thinking of moving Yeah, Yeah, he yeah. went to Europe for a year, he yeah. came back, he said, I'd like to make this home. Okay. And my daughter, one of my two daughters, did the same thing. And the other daughter, who knows, she's okay. getting her doctorate, and, you know, <laughs> maybe some yeah. university around here will hire her, and I'll have all three, that'll be great. That's wonderful. <laughs> So, and where do you personally live? Do you live in the uh, I city? lived in the stockade for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, uh, my wife has always wanted a piece of land. Yeah. So um, it finally reached the place where I had to give in. And we moved just uh, outside the city line. In Dwaynesburg? Uh, no, nope, in uh, Rotterdam. Rotterdam. Um, uh, uh, a 1701 house, uh -huh. um, which so it's the... In fact, Original, there's a sign on the street yeah. above us that says this was known as Westina. The Dutch called it wilderness. Mm -hmm. So my house is at the edge of the wilderness <laughs> in 1701. <laughs> I had a uh, historic architect come look at the house while it was being inspected just to help think about it. And he said, this home is the original green building. Wow. Because every floorboard, every wall, every brick came from this property. When it falls down, it's going right back where it came from. Mm -hmm. It was very cool. So l let me ask you a question that's public information, and I just, but I always ask this question. What is the salary for you? Uh, at Proctor's? Uh, it's just $200,000. Okay, well worth it for you, based on what you've done. Well, I, I hope so. I hope the value's there. Okay. I, I hope so. I, it, I think so, personally. So I don't fault for that, but I just... Well, we've grown from $2.5 million a year to $22 okay. million dollars okay. a year. And well, that's the range of salary. what we do is <laughs> substantial, as I said. Yes. We go from yeah. energy yeah. to, to uh, markets and Green markets and public access television and other stuff. Now, really, I, you're, the, you're the center of Schenectady, really. I mean, right now, the revitalizing a community. Which is interesting because an arts venue is not usually the center of a community. It should be G E or something. It usually is something, you know, been. Big factory. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, I think it's that that's just wonderful. say yes attitude. It's yeah. about bringing 
the diversity of the community into one place. Being welcoming. You know, and, and welcoming. And so did you ever ask Karen Johnson, like, why she couldn't do this when she was mayor? Um, <laughs> you know, times change. I mean, at the time, the building was needed to be saved. Yeah. And as when she was mayor, she actually took the gamble to put a roof on it and give a bunch of volunteers the chance to do something in the building. Okay. So I give her a lot of credit. Okay. I mean, the, the, there was a man who was there for some time um, uh, who uh, brought it to a place where it had a large financial debt, very mm -hmm. large debt at the time, <coughs> Dennis Madden. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I credit Dennis Madden, mm -hmm. and I thank him for the debt he got us into then. Because he did it because he tried to create an environment where that was the performance center of the capital region. Mm -hmm. He set the stage so to speak. for what we ended up doing <laughs> four or five years after he left. Because yeah. um, why else would the second city of the capital region have this terrific performance facility? A series mm -hmm. of accidents and, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an odd So what does your wife say now? 12 years later. She will never she, leave. <laughs> she will never leave. So she's not saying, oh no, another. <laughs> she, her roots, to use her garden analogy, yeah. are in the ground and deep. Well, that's great. So if I leave Proctor's, uh, she's staying. It's, it's without her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a commuter. I mean, it's interesting, just even on a bigger scale, how, you know, again, that we've been around for a number of years, even though I say I'm at least 29 years old. But, you know, the cities were lit. So I started off to show that. You know, I've seen the cities down in the dumps or New York City going bankrupt in the 70s. And, and now I'm looking at Albany and, and Schenectady and, oh, they're all dumps, you know. And now, you know, New York City is revitalized. I mean, even in the, the worst neighborhoods are now special. And, you know, and I know Albany's trying. We have many people on the show from Albany, mm -hmm. you know, trying to, you know, convention center or trying to make it a, you know, that's where the place to be, but you're on the cutting edge, that's what I'm saying, this is something countrywide that really taking these, you know, Absolutely. impoverished cities and making them, hey, that's the young people, that's where I want to be, you know. Absolutely, and the way I describe the capital region, I've described it many times, is it's a suburb surrounded by cities rather than a city surrounded by suburbs. And when you think about that, it's so true, because you go outside those four cities and you can walk to a farm. Mm -hmm. You can walk mm -hmm. to a farm from downtown Albany going south to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. right. You can walk to a farm after East Lansing. I mean, you know, the, most of suburbia, if not all of it, is in the middle. The airport's in the middle. The malls are in the middle. The traditional suburban housing is in the middle. And it may be our salvation because we don't have the capacity yet to do significant regional land planning, but our natural four cities that used to compete with each other. Albany, Schenectady, Troy, Clifton Park? No, Saratoga. Saratoga. Okay. Has contained all the rest of it. So if you drew a circle where the most people were, it would be a circle that would be... Um, uh, uh, oh, I see, with suburbs. Loudonville, yeah, right. uh, Clifton Park. Bonans, Clifton Park, yeah. um, uh, over Niskayuna. to... Niskayuna, Rexford. Right. I mean, that would be where the people are. And those yeah. people don't care what city they go to. I got you. And I, I actually love how different our cities are. I really mm. love it. Which is why when Cap Rep came to us, now we call it the Rep, uh, and said, you know, can we talk about partnering because we're they having were, a hard time yeah. doing this alone? Yeah. We looked at it and went, this is not going to be easy. It's not going to be cheap. But the relationships that could be created by crossing that suburban center and saying, yeah, we are we're committed to Al Schenectady. We're also mm -hmm. committed to Albany. Mm -hmm. We're also committed to Troy. We're also committed to Saratoga. These cities have to make it. And it seemed right to say, yeah, we're going to be part of helping downtown Albany and the cultural scene in the capital region by supporting Cap Rep. Just was the right decision to make. And how many years has it been since you've come? Three. Three years. And actually, amazingly <laughs> enough, while it's been hard and we have not met all of our hopes, we've eliminated over $700,000 of debt that they had. It's oh, all gone. Incredible. 
So, wow. it's been so a how great, much more debt do they have that you got to get? 112,000 that actually has a pledge against it from the state. If we could just get the state to say, here's the money. So we could be almost, with no debt. Wow. But you so, but it's a little easier time, for right? yourself to go from practice. Let's say maybe you have a good act. You can go to the rep, you know, as well do one act in Albany and one act in Schenectady. Well, the rep is very different because mm -hmm. the rep is producing professional theater. So when the rep does something, it's from scratch. It's, it's, right. it's right. made from scratch professional theater. When Proctor's does something, <laughs> it's bought in a box, brought in a truck. It's really different. We're a presenter, and the cap, and the, uh, cap rep, the rep is a producer. Mm -hmm. And actually, there's yeah. an interesting thing about this capital region, you know, where suburbs surrounded by cities, because Albany is the only city that really produces any art. Really, no, well, the little, little spa theater in Saratoga. Yeah, that's somewhat professional, somewhat not. But the professional theater company is is the rep. It's the only equity Lort Theater, League of Resident Theater Theater. And then at the Washington, ASO, Washington Park. It's not Playhouse? all professional. No, I mean it's okay. it's good. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. But it's not the full time equity all equity performer professional theater. But the ASO is a full time professional orchestra. Um, and the only dance yeah. company that's really professional is uh, Ellen Sinopoli, which is based at the Egg. So, so Maud Baum isn't. You know, there's Eva, sometimes, Eva, there's some yeah. professionals, most, mostly not. Okay. And it's a distinction in the capital region we haven't fully embraced. Right. That where, where there are the professional, and not to say union is better than non union, but union. Equity union and musicians union professionals are, you know, definitely over well, time and then not above. Russell Sage used to be a huge and that draw used to, right and the used New to York have, State Theater Institute, which was all professional yeah, and equity, but right. that's gone. So it's kind of amazing because Albany's a cultural scene are kind of the producers. Mm -hmm. uh, Schenectady's cultural scene is definitely the presenters. Mm -hmm. Troy's cultural scene is more around the makers. You know, the visual artists. And well, that Troy Music Hall is incredible. And the Music Hall is great. They're a presenter. But the, the, mm -hmm. what happens so much in Troy is the sale of antiques and stuff that's made. There's the new Maker Center in Troy. There's the visual arts program that's at the um, art center of the capital region. I mean, that's not, uh, it's not black and white, but mm -hmm. largely that's the maker's place. And then... Um, uh, Saratoga is a mixed bag of uh, visual arts and the major attractions that SPAC can bring in the summer. But you know, the rest of the year, there's not a lot of performance in Saratoga. Well, but the little spa theater, I keep going back to that because I go up there. They do a great job. In the colder weather, and it's just uh, really, it's really nice. And then there's other theater which uh, around here, where, I don't mean in. Pittsfield, but the, uh, the oh, the once barn, you go to the, the Berkshires, the Berkshires have the, a ton of professional. Theater. Right, but then you have the barn, the uh, out in Averill Park, West Sand Lake. You got a theater mm -hmm. there. I mean, there's other. They yeah, got and the, those are mostly amateur theaters. And then in Hudson, you that's have, professional. She does a great job. Right in Hudson, what is the Chatham? What is it? No, no, Chatham? no. no. Um, <laughs> stage works, Hudson. Okay, stage works. Okay. Yep, um, that's all professional. And then you got something in Chatham. Where there's a theater, uh, Mac Hayden Theater, mm -hmm. which those seats are so small, I can't, I can't go there. I mean, I tried, but I'm not that, you know, they're just too small for me. I fall asleep because I have no way to move, you know. I mean, I had a little bit of a problem in pro with proctors and that, but I've adapted. Maybe you ought to lose a little weight there. <laughs> it wasn't over. me. It wasn't, you know, look, I said if Mike Eck can fit into the seat. <laughs> so, okay. so I'm, I'm gonna, sorry. I'm, I'm going to tell you a trick. Bantering. I'm going to tell you a trick, <laughs> yes. and it's a all trick right, that hear. all your listeners are going to hear. All right. okay. The seats at Proctor's range from <laughs> seven, 16 and a half inches wide to 21 and a half inches wide. Uh -huh. They're like that because they're laid out for sight lines, so people aren't looking in someone, the back of someone's head. Mm -hmm. We know where the wide ones are. <laughs> right. You'll help out Mark over so, here, Philip. If over you here. say, you know, I'd like right. a wider right. seat, <laughs> they have a chart for that. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. Right. Thank you for that tip. <laughs> but otherwise, I get right. an aisle Indeed, seat. Yeah. Otherwise, I need an aisle seat to stretch my legs to onto the aisle. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a wonderful time at, at uh, Proctor's. I know I saw, um, 
who was it? There was a performer, a singer, that came on. And he passed away a few years, a few months later. Uh, Jewish, uh, oh. what's his name? Um, I think of him with Barbara Streisand a lot, but uh, I can't think of who that is. Oh, okay. He had died of cancer, but he was on stage at Proctor's just a few months before he passed away. And then I remember when George Burns came when he was like 98. <laughs> well, I mean, and clearly I mean, the Jewish connection to entertainment is and the arts is unbelievable. I mean, yeah. the producers are mostly Jewish. The, I mean, there's this long tradition. I mm -hmm. mean, and it's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And I, I was trying to work on a program similar to this with Zeb at the, for Schenectady Access TV and uh, some other, uh, another gentleman, and it just somehow just petered out. I don't know, it just seems like it took a long time to get the graphics and to get things going, so we just kind of, I, I came out here with Rabbi Simon yeah, <laughs> instead, right. and I maybe I'll give him, maybe I'll give Zeb the shows and he could put it on, you know. Yeah, we could do it that way yeah. or we could do it the other way. Well, okay. Whatever, we'll, we'll Mark, try to make we'll it talk. work. We'll talk, we'll talk, we'll, talk. we'll make okay. it work. <laughs> We'll make it work. We're out of time, but it's really been very enjoyable. And, you know, you've been doing an incredible, incredible job. And we just wish you always with a blessing. Should continue with success, even more success. And, of course, everything with good health. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for Shalom, coming. Rabbi. Thank you, Mark.